Now, as I said at the top of the show, the AFP has launched an investigation following a clash between independent Senator Lydia Thorpe and officers at an anti-transgender rally outside Parliament House on Thursday, which is yesterday. And joining me now is Alex Caruana, the president of the Australian Federal Police Association. Alex, thank you, first of all, so much for your time. What do you make of what happened yesterday? Look, the... the, the our officers were there to keep the peace and to make sure that everybody was safe. And that includes the protesters as well as the public. And uh, in this particular instance, the senator got herself in a position where it may have been unsafe and she wasn't following a lawful direction. So the officers tried to move her on. This is, this is in my opinion, and this is obviously pending a, an open investigation. But in my opinion, she seemed to have lost her footing a little bit. And the uh, AFP officers were there to lend her a hand to try and help her up and uh, protect her dignity. Is there anything that you've seen in any of that vision that would have you worried for any of the police involved? Look, not really. We, did, we, did, we do see that it looks like there's someone there that's looking to get a little bit more aggressive against the senator, and the police officers did a good job to, to protect the senator from that person, as well as the private, private security that was there um, that was uh, also uh, you know, keeping people safe at that, at that event. The day-to-day -day work of police is hard enough. Are you appalled that a sitting senator, regardless, I know there's an investigation and we've got to be careful, et cetera, et cetera, but is putting not even herself but police in this position and not just once, not just twice, but three times? Look, it's, it's not fair for anybody to use police as political pawns or to score political points. It's also not fair for anyone, whether they're a member of the public or, or, or a politician or anybody, to try and score points you know, on social media or otherwise with police. Police are there to keep the community safe, and that's what my members were doing. It's hard enough being a police officer without this scrutiny, without all of this... Mm. Um, without all of this extra attention um, that, that people are putting on them, who would want to be a police officer this day and yeah. age? And, and that, that, you know, we are having a, a recruitment crisis here in, in Australia when it comes to policing. Yeah, I want to ask you about that in just a second. I'll follow up. But have you spoken to the officers who were involved yesterday? Look, unfortunately, I haven't spoken directly to them. I have spoken to some of their colleagues and their superiors and they are, um, from what I've been told, they have been supported quite well by, by AFP and obviously as an association and a union, we're there to look after them. So our door is always open for them to come in and, and seek the help that they need. You just mentioned the issue with recruitment. We've seen the impacts of the defund the police movements over in the USA. Crime has skyrocketed. I think in New York it's up like 30% in a year or something ridiculous. But even just disrespecting police when you're a public figure is damaging, isn't it? Yeah, well, look, the, the escalating um, the escalating occupational violence that police officers all over Australia and, and in, particularly for the AFP that they're facing every day is, is atrocious. Um, it's, and it's almost like that the courts give more attention to the rights of the offenders than they do about the rights of police officers. Police officers are human beings as well and they need to be looked after just, just as much as any other human being. So... You know, we're having lots of lots of uh, lots of debate at the moment about you know what's right, you know what's right, what's wrong. But let's let's go back to the basic principles, and that is that we're all we're all human beings, including the police officers out there, and no one deserves to be spat at, no one deserves to be punched yeah. or, or receive any version of occupational violence. That includes the police officers. They're doing their job to keep the community safe. Itself. My members do that really, really well. Our members in the AFP, and, and many of your listeners probably don't know this, but we are the lowest paid police force in Australia, and we've got. Um, some of the lowest numbers per capita of, uh, in any state or territory in Australia and the largest jurisdiction. So it's really, really difficult for our members when we've got low resources and low pay and it really affecting morale and adding this sort of pressure on top mm. of it, it compounds the problems. Is, you look at what happened in Queensland and you look at what happens all over this country and, and my ex-partner's a policeman, the father of my four-and-a-half-year-old, is a serving police officer and I don't know if people understand what it is that they, they not just what they do but what they are willing to do when they leave the house in the morning to go to work. They could give their life in service of us every single day and that's not being silly, that's genuine and some of the disrespect that we show to them appalls me. That, that's right. These, these members literally put their lives on the line each day. They put themselves in situations where normal human beings don't and shouldn't. And that's what they get paid to do. So we need to respect them. We need to respect them. We need to respect their families because they are literally sacrificing time from their families and life. We do know that being a police officer does lead to premature deaths. We do have the shortest lifespan, one of the shortest lifespans of any profession because of the mental stresses and the physical stresses mm. that police officers put their bodies and their minds through. So we really need to respect these people that are doing that to look after 
the community. Yeah, look, if an individual is out of line, you know, no organisation is perfect, they should be held to account. But on the whole, I just think the mentality that, that is being pushed by some sectors is, is really abhorrent and it needs to be called out. And you've done that today and I thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Erin. Thanks for having me.